it is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. If you are fat, that is okay. Woke TikTok doctors might just be the new biggest menace to public health. We're going to break down a viral video from one of these woke TikTok doctors. But first, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brad Palumbo. I cover all the craziest things on the internet, in our politics, and in the LGBT community from a center-right, moderate perspective. If you're new here, do consider subscribing and sticking around. We're so close to 100,000 subscribers, and I can't wait to hit it. And don't forget to like and comment with your thoughts as we go along. Now, let's hear what this woke doctor had to say that's generating so much conversation. Here's my hot take as a doctor. I totally agree. It is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. If you are fat, that is okay. It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. It is not an emergency. You don't have to drop everything in the pursuit of being not fat. Y'all, her medical school might need to revoke that diploma because babe is not cutting it, not keeping up to date with the science. I mean, would you ever tell a patient, it's okay to smoke cigarettes. We need to normalize lung cancer. Of course, you wouldn't because that would be insane. And yet, here we are. Now that doesn't mean people who smoke cigarettes are horrible people or that they don't deserve compassion or care from their doctors. Of course they still do. They deserve all of those things. But nobody, especially not their doctor, should be telling them it's okay to smoke or that that's a acceptable or healthy or normal choice they should be making. In the same way, nobody, but especially not a doctor, should be telling people it is okay to be obese, that it's perfectly fine, don't worry about it, because it's not. In fact, according to the CDC, obesity in children and adults increases the risk for the following health conditions, high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which are risk factors for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, breathing problems such as asthma and sleep apnea, joint problems, gallstones and gallbladder disease, and of course, childhood obesity is also associated with psychological problems such as anxiety and depression, low self-esteem and lower self-reported quality of life, social problems such as bullying and stigma, and obesity as adults. Adults with obesity have higher risk for stroke, many types of cancer, premature death, and mental illness, such as clinical depression and anxiety. But yeah, of course, according to Miss Woke TikTok Doctor, it's all perfectly fine. Yeah, being fat, totally cool, don't worry about it, let's normalize it. Girl, what? Obesity-related deaths are now the second leading cause of preventable deaths in the United States, second only to smoking cigarettes. Yet we have doctors telling millions of impressionable people on TikTok that being overweight is just fine and dandy. What is this world coming to, y'all? Aaron said this other thing in a different video that I totally agree with as well, is that it is okay to not be healthy. We act like it is this moral failing, this cardinal sin that you deserve a scarlet letter if you are not healthy. And there's a name for that and that's called healthism. So I kind of agree with her point here that it's not a moral failing to be unhealthy in many cases, right? Like a lot of things that happen to your health are just beyond your control, right? Getting cancer, developing some illness, catching some disease. It's just not up to you. And so why, you, we should never judge somebody for that. Same with a disability or something people can't help. Yet, with the exception of pretty rare medical cases, most people who are obese or morbidly obese can help that. That is something within their power. It is a product of their decisions and choices. Now, I don't think they should be bullied or mocked or demeaned for it whatsoever, but we can evaluate those choices in a negative way and encourage them to make better ones. That's not some form of bigotry. On the contrary, if you're actually compassionate and care for others, it's what you should want for them because it's what's best for their own sake. Now, don't get me wrong. In my line of work, there's a lot of people that I see that want to gain weight, lose weight, take other measures that they think will improve their health in some way. And by all means, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with that and be supportive of that. But a good doctor will not judge you for being fat. They will not judge you for being unhealthy. They will not judge the decisions that you made or the decisions that were made for you, which is the much more likely scenario that got you to the point where you are right now. 
So I actually do agree with the first thing she said. A good doctor will and should not judge you for making bad decisions or for being unhealthy or for being overweight. That is not their job. They're not here to shame you or look down on you. They are here to help you. And shaming or bullying people doesn't usually help them break the bad habits. Sometimes it can actually have the opposite effect and, you know, push them more into the negative mental spaces that are often causing them to overeat or make bad decisions in the first place. So I totally agree. No judgment. And in general, we should not be demeaning or bullying people based on their appearances, including, yes, obese and overweight people. But a good doctor will still encourage you to change and try to educate and inform you about how you can improve your health. And yes, if you're overweight, that means losing weight. A good doctor won't tell you that something that can kill you, shorten your life, and make your quality of life worse is perfectly fine and dandy. As for this other bit about the decisions that were made for you, what in the heck is that supposed to mean? That is a complete denial of the very real role that personal responsibility plays in all this. To be clear, when you have overweight children, that's not their fault in most cases, right? That's often a product of the choices the parents are making for them. And when somebody grows up overweight, it is harder to make different choices as an adult because you have to relearn bad habits and educate yourself. And I, it's definitely not as easy as if you grew up with healthy habits, but it's still 100% within your control and you can totally choose to do things differently than how you were raised. When I was in high school, I lived with my dad and my stepmom and they made very unhealthy habits and decisions, drinking tons of soda, other things. And I make very different choices as a young adult, and it's really not that hard. These days, we all have access to an unimaginable wealth of information at our fingertips for free. You can find extensive information about nutrition and health. You can find free workout videos with personal trainers that you can do from home with no weights on YouTube for free. It really is all there for you if you go out and seek it. So certainly going to be harder for some people than others, but to suggest that any adult who is overweight, it is the product of choices someone else made for them is totally false and is robbing people of their agency. We're here to help you with the changes that you want to make. And if you are someone who wants to lose weight for health purposes, and there are certain scenarios where losing weight can be health promoting, we're here to help you with that. We are also here to help you if you decide to not make any changes at all. We're still there. So here's the thing. I respect people's different political views, and I understand that good people on different sides of things can end up on different sides. Like it doesn't make you evil. It doesn't make you stupid whatever. I could trust a liberal doctor or a doctor that voted for Democrats, even though I myself am center right politically, but I couldn't fully trust a radically woke doctor like this chick. Something about wokeness seems to turn the same people who talk about following the science into anti-science, anti-reality denialists when the facts run against their ideology. I don't know about you guys, but if I saw my doctor post something this obviously unscientific, incorrect, and deeply ideological on social media, I'd be changing my physician in short order. Which is why most doctors are pretty careful about their social media presence and don't post divisive and controversial and ideological stuff like this. I am not a fan of the new wave of Dr. TikTok and people being doctor activist influencers like this. Like, I don't really think that's best serving your patients. You do you, but don't be surprised when many of us choose to go elsewhere for our healthcare needs. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments, would you trust this doctor with your health in, in her hands? Let me know. I'm curious for your thoughts, though I think I know what many of you are going to say. And do consider subscribing. We're so close to 100,000 on, on YouTube. Can't wait to hit that benchmark and drop a like. If you're still here at this point in the video, you must have found something interesting or insightful. So you better drop that like and reward my suffering. I, I pour through TikTok and watch all this brain rot to find what will entertain you people. So at least you can do is reward me with a like. And if somehow you're not sick of me yet, you can actually check out some more of my similar content and go here or here to keep watching.